anyone for sausages, it's oink. Okay, this one's going to be a tough one to describe to non-UK viewers of a certain age. Oink was a comic by IPC magazines that ran from 86 to 88. There were 68 issues. And I first became aware of it because they gave away a trial issue with Buster Comic, a comic I used to buy, or used to get bought for me. Um, eventually, Oink was actually merged into Buster, as was a number of other comics of the day, like Wizard and Chips, and so on. It's inspired by Mad Magazine. It was quite controversial at the time because it was quite subversive and some people considered it unsuitable for children. Um, I wouldn't call it like Viz. Think of it, well, think of it as a clean Viz. It, 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 it's, it's such a hard one to describe. And it was so controversial that W. H. Smith put it on the top shelf. It's, uh, Oink started off as fortnightly. I think it was called. O I think it was actually called Oink fortnightly, and then went weekly and back to fortnightly. And well, we're going to talk about some of the notable strips in the magazine as well. Frank Sidebottom, the man with the papier mache head, yes, for real, actually wrote his own strip and had that in the magazine. There was Uncle Pig, who was the editor of the magazine. And things like a Pete and his pimple, because he had a pimple that was bigger than he was. Uh, the Secret Diary of Hadrian Vile, which was a parody of Adrian Mole. Um, there was Tom Thug, a, a less funny version of Ernie the Psychotic Madman from Your Sinclair. And a Rubbish Man as well, which who I don't remember, but is pertinent to the game. And uh, Charlie Brooker contributed various strips to the magazine. Um, but he was still at school at the time. It's regarded as quite influential, but it was very short-lived, and it did, and it did spawn a computer game. And it did spawn a computer game by CRL on the Spectrum, the Amstrad and C64. And I'm going to start off on the Amstrad version because I bought this on the budget re-release. Uh, it was re-released by Alternative Software uh, very quickly, after about a year, in fact. And you have the loading screen here with Uncle Pig and his CPC 6128. And there's a peculiar thing about the game on the Amstrad because I took this game back because I had terrible trouble with it. You see, here it says, press fire to start a new game. Except you press fire on the joystick, nothing happens. And there's no instruction of how to redefine the keys or anything, or select joystick or anything like that. You have to basically end up going through all the keys, which was what I did tonight, to find out how to do this. And then you redefine the keys by going up, down, left, right, and fire on the joystick. And then they've got joystick control. But nowhere in the instructions does it tell you this. Nowhere on the screen does it tell you this. It's completely having to find this out for yourself. And I got so fed up of playing on the keyboard because I couldn't find out how to redefine the keys as a eight or nine year old, I just took it back. And what you have to do is get the magazine out. And by doing that, you have to play one of three mini games in order to give you enough points to get some content for the magazine. You'll see how it works. It's a little bit over complicated. You've got things like circulation and, and oh yes, did I mention you have to load all of the mini games in. So if you switch between them, um, yeah, you've got to go and load the other one in. This is Pete and his pimple, which appears to have no relation to anything in the game at all. It's a breakout clone. A slightly attractive breakout clone, but one that's quite frustrating to play as well. And you simply hit the ball at the bricks. You shoot the things that come towards you, and you acquire points and that's it you just have to play this for about 20 minutes and then you'll get enough points to fill the comic strip up yeah i think this is one of the reasons i took the game back as well a not being able to play on joystick i'm playing joystick now but not being able to play on joystick and then just playing these mini games and realizing what 
I'd actually bought. There's no tune. It's a very basic sound effects. And there's a breakout game in the Amstrad CPC manual. And it looks far more basic than this, but it's more fun. It, 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 there's no link between the comic strip. And this is the key thing with the game. You, it's supposed to be edited through the magazine, but you have to play these unrelated games to get the points you need. Over to the spectrum and... Uh, People who suffer from photosensitive things look away because it might set you off with this flashing oink. And this time you get an input selection at the start. Marvellous. Why didn't they do this for the Amstrad? Goodness knows. And you see a button about M to transfer panels. Yes, you have to fiddle around to insert the panels into the magazine, but we'll see a bit of that later. I mean, you can quit the game at any time, but you'll be reloading if you want one of these other games. There are three mini games. And there's a clock ticking all the time, and every time you lose a life, the clock goes forward, and we advance towards July the 7th. Why have you only got... I mean, I think it's still fortnightly at this time, so why have you only got three days to put the magazine together? I don't know. Fiddle around with the keys and eventually you'll be able to get a game. You see, there's all the strips in the magazine as well. But you can only, there's only three of the strips you can play the games for. The breakout game has a little bit more pace on the spectrum, which makes it a little bit more fun. But then you realise when you start off the game, the game has the ball much slower. And then the ball will get faster and then the game will become very hard to play indeed. There are bonuses that will get thrown out of you. None of them particularly exciting. Some slow the ball down. Some of them put a force field up so the ball can't go off the screen. It's breakout. There's countless budget breakout games. And even when you've got Uncle Pig here on the screen here, it's still pretty boring. I mean, they've put these enemies coming towards you just to liven the game up. But shooting them doesn't give you any bonuses either. You think shooting the bandies coming towards you might actually get you something special, but no, you just plod on with the game. Over to the C64 and the editor there. I, well, I don't know what computer he's got that time. That's not a C64 he's got. As I seem to recall, very early on, Oink gave a flexi disc out on the cover of the magazine. So I bought that issue. Then I found my dad in no way was going to allow this record to be played on his expensive Technics turntable. So these are the pages you're going to fill, but again, you can only play Tom Thug, Rubbish Man and Pete's Pimple. Let's get Pete's Pimple over with so we can see this on the C64. And off we go. It's the same as the CPC version and not the same as the Spectrum version. We're bored. It's boring. It's boring. It's no good and the ball speeds up and I've got no way and hope of playing this with a capture delay because it's impossible. Because the ball's too fast. Why? And again, what thing does this have to beat and his pimple? Trying again on the C64, playing on the C64C now, so the picture may have changed. I was on my bread bin before because I've got a cheat, but I couldn't get my C64 bread bin to load it off the USB stick, but uh, it will on my C. I've basically got a permanent force field now, which is the only way, only way I'm going to be able to play it. And it's so boring, and you can see all these levels, it's the same. It's, it's breakout. Do you remember that? breakout game I played in the MSX on one of the MSX game roundups and it was a budget game it was all right but it it wasn't much you know even there even with budget prices it wasn't much okay so we're back on the CPC and now we're going to load rubbish man a title that I suspect will predict the quality of the mini game that's Rubbish Man. 
superhero and we've got now true control and power and we have to shoot but there's height involved you shoot things to get energy and you've got height but it's really difficult to judge well the height works see do you see do you see because it's 2D and you've got a shadow to judge with, but it's, you can't really get a good grip on how high the obstacles you're going over and under are. And some of the gaps are really tight and this game is to be designed by a complete and utter sadist. Up I go, am I high up enough to get over there? How can I judge where I am? I don't know, I've got my shadow. tell you what though it's got some links to the comic strip because we've actually got the character in the game which we didn't have for Pete's pimple staying on the C64C so I can cheat uh, collision detection off and infinite lives is on because it's impossible I probably would have died already and it's impossible to judge anything It's a little bit more playable on the C64, mainly because I'm using a cheat, but... Uh. And remember, we're playing the budget re-release of this. This was a full price game by CRL. And is it any wonder it was out on budget within about a year of release? The multi-load I can excuse because you've got to get all this stuff into memory. But the fact there's so you get you've got all these strips. Why is the Frank Side Bottom in this? Would that cost more to license? I'm at the Frank Side Bottom level. And this is the third of the game. So this is Tom Thug. Which again has no relation to anything. You are a circle. You have to shoot things. And some things die when you shoot them. Some things just stand still, but are still lethal when you touch them. And they home in on you. And the placing of the things that home in on you is completely random. So it's pot luck every time you go on the screen whether you can actually get past it or not. You have to collect the things marked B and the keys and various things. And the one thing I can say about the CPC version of the game here, spoiler alert, is at least it's so slow you stand a chance of getting past the baddies. On the CPC you can touch the grey blocks without dying. And you can get through some gaps you can't get through on the other versions. But uh, it, it's... It kind of reminds me of that Amsoft game, The Prize, but slower and with baddies that home in on you that you basically can't always get past. So I can lure this one round here. This one's a fairly easy one to get past because his placement has allowed him to pop round there, but it could easily, that screen could have started easily with three of the baddies in that small gap or next to you or in a different place. It's, it's random baddie placement every time. over to the specy where things are faster and far more frustrating and i suspect this version may have been hacked because when you shoot the baddies you can go through them i don't know if someone's, someone's clearly done that as a public service because in other videos i've looked at it seems possibly they kill you but i've not activated any cheats on this version it just seems to me that you can actually get through and that makes the game much easier. And also, if baddies accidentally get placed in the top left-hand corner, so they can't get you to pick up the items, you shoot them, you basically shoot everything. I don't know how they came up with these ideas for these mini-games. Uh, 
you could even have it tom thug is in a car park or somewhere he is to get out or he's done some destructive thing and he has to get out of somewhere and the security guards are after you no it's circles shooting circles it's such a lack of imagination that's what makes me upset about this game you've got a iconic comic of the era one that wasn't really to my taste but was very popular and is said to be very influential and had people like Frank Sidebottom and Charlie Brooker working for it and then you get this excuse for a game this level is this uh, Tom Thug game is quite substantial it's quite big I'm actually use the RZX archive to get further into this level the screens are very samey it's the same criticisms of the Amstrad version right over to the C64 uh, not much sprite usage going on here given how the circles are jumping around one character block at a time after you the grey blocks kill you everything kills you it's all over very quickly i do have infinite lives thank goodness it's hideous you do have some atmospheric sound effects going on in the background is that something we've got to look for positives here and also see these talk games generally have quite fluid sprites in terms of how you can shoot and things this isn't it the directionality of the way you're shooting is quite you have to quite force the joystick into the direction, if you see what I mean, for it to register you've actually moved. So you see, you've got three of those things after. How are we supposed to get past? Really? And they activate it back in again after a few seconds. You've got all three of them done. And it, the bullets won't go past them when they're deactivated. So you've got to work out a way past this. And it's not going to happen. They just home in on you. And now three different placements again. Now I've got two down there because they randomly spawn in all these versions. You still can't get away though. They're just so... I mean, I'm trapped. There's, you know there's no way out. Oh, it's just so... And again, this is... Uh, this is quite... This could be a decent game if that bit had been polished up a bit. So this is what happens with the strips. So we filled Uncle Pig's page there. So we get... Basically, every panel you manage to fill, you get some kind of joke or text. The instructions lead you, believe, lead you to believe you're filling a comic, but actually all you get is a load of lame jokes as rewards for filling the panels. And you know what? You don't have to complete the game because you can shuffle the panels around so you can see all the jokes without actually having um, got enough pan panels to complete the entire comic, if you see what I mean. So if all you're after is the jokes, then just shuffle them around, remove them, put them back in somewhere else, and off you go. Star signs, 80s thing, obviously. Uh, it, did Oink write these themselves, or was it the coders? Oh, I don't know. Oink was an iconic comic from the mid to late 80s. And everyone knew about it, and Frank Sidebottom was in it, as I've constantly said. And there's so many ways you could have ported this game to the home systems, and the mini games idea is fantastic. Imagine we're going to play all the characters from the comics in the mini games. But the reality is, two of the mini games here have no relation to the comic at all, and the third one is basically a lame shoot 'em up. CPC version is nice and colourful. And it looks fairly okay, but that joystick selection is unforgivable. As I say, one of the reasons I took the game back, Spectrum version is slightly less polished. It's got all the same problems as the other versions. It doesn't look as attractive. It actually, a lot of those mini games, especially the Tom Thug game, look like something from 1982, 1983, not 1987. C64 version, again, incredibly frustrating. It looks a little bit more like a modern game. As a full-price game, you'd have been incredibly disappointed in this game. And the reviews were mixed. Some magazines liked it, some magazines didn't. The CPC version has that horrible joystick-defining thing going on. But other than that, as a budget game, if you took away the multi-load, it'd be about passable. Same for the other versions, really. It's a budget game. There's, it's not worthy of a full-price 
tag. I think it was 7.95, so not quite what other games cost. It's pretty dreadful. And one that's really only of interest to Oink completists who want to see what the Oink computer game was all about. There's nothing else here for the rest of us. And frankly, there was nothing else here for the rest of us in 1987 either.